Okay, our next example in Bernoulli's uh, equation is a pipe where the diameter changes. And so uh, here we have a pipe where the water is flowing at 4 meters per second, then the diameter doubles to 10 centimeters, and so the velocity decreases, and so what would be the resulting pressure at that point? So let's write down Bernoulli's equation. So we have P at 1, that's pressure at 1, plus rho g h at 1, plus 1 half rho v1 squared is equal to the pressure at point 2 plus rho g h at point 2 plus 1 half rho v2 squared. Well, the first thing we need to do is figure out what the velocity is at point 2. If the diameter doubled, what does that do to the cross-sectional area? Well, if we say that this is a1, the cross-sectional area 1, and over here this is cross-sectional area a2, we can see that uh, a2 is equal to a1 times the ratio of um, d2 over d1 squared. All right, then if d2 is twice as big as d1, we can then say that this is equal to a1 times, um, uh, let's say here, times uh, uh, 10 squared over 5 squared. That would be 100 over 25, or 4 times A1. So we can see, by doubling the diameter of the pipe, we quadruple the cross-sectional area. And, because we can say that A1V1 is equal to A2V2, that then implies that V2 is equal to V1 times A1 over A2. Now, since A2 is 4 times as big as A1, so we can say this is equal to V1 times... Uh, a1 divided by 4 times a1, this cancels out, and so now we can see that v, uh, v2 is 1 quarter of v1. So if v1 is 4 meters per second, then v2 has to be 1 quarter of that, or 1 meter per second. All right, so now that we know that, we're now ready to tackle Bernoulli's equation. First of all, the height doesn't change, which means that the term rho gh1 and the term rho gh2 has to be exactly the same. They stay constant. So I can go ahead and divide or just simply remove it from both sides of the equation, which now means the equation then simplifies to p1 plus 1 half rho v1 squared equals p2 plus 1 half rho v2 squared. So since I'm looking for p2, that's ultimately what I'm after right here, I can then solve this equation for P2. I can move the one-half rho V2 squared to the other side and flip the equation around. So now I end up with P2 is equal to P1 plus one-half rho V1 squared minus one-half rho V2 squared. All right, now I think I'm ready to plug in some numbers. First of all, P1 was two atmospheres, so we can leave that there. Or before I do that, you know what? I think I'll factor out a one-half rho. That makes it a little bit easier. So P2 is equal to P1 plus one-half times rho times V1 squared minus V2 squared. That makes it a little bit easier to work with. So let's move over here. Plug in P2 is equal to P1, which is two atmospheres. We don't have to convert that to Pascal's. That is fine. Uh, plus one-half times the density, assuming that this is water, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And then I multiply that times V1 squared minus V2 squared. Now remember, V1 squared was 4 meters per second, so that's a 4 meters per second. We have to square that, minus V2, which was only 1 meter per second, so that's 1 meter per second, and we have to square that. So it would be 16 minus 1, or 15. So we have P2 is equal to two atmospheres. Uh, one half of 1,000, that would be uh, plus 500 kilograms meters cubed, and multiply that times 16 minus 1, or 15. That would be meters squared per second squared. All right. Now, looking at the units. Is kilograms per cubic meter times meter squared per second square? Is that Pascal's? Hmm. I don't know. Let's find out. Well, first of all, this cancels out with uh, two of those. So now we have kilograms uh, per meter per second square. 
but I need pascals. I need a unit of pressure, which is newtons per square meter, and a newton is a kilogram meters per second squared. So it looks like I do need a meter here, and I do need another meter over here. So that means kilograms meters per second squared divided by meters squared, which is indeed pascals. So units work out. All right, so what's 10 times uh, uh, five, uh, uh, 15 times 500? So pressure 2 is equal to 2 atmospheres. Uh, plus, hmm, that's interesting, if the velocity slows down, it indicates that the pressure goes up. Does that make sense? Well, let's find out here. Um, so here we have, if the velocity becomes smaller, well, if this becomes a smaller quantity, then something else has to get bigger. So this becomes smaller, that means this has to be become bigger, which is indeed what we're finding. So with Bernoulli's equation, we can see, first of all, when the height goes up, pressure goes down. But when the velocity goes down, pressure goes up. So go ahead, we'll continue here. So this would be 7,500 newtons per square meter. And of course, then we want to convert that to atmospheres, and the conversion from atmospheres to pascals, or pascals to atmospheres, right here we can say that one atmosphere is equal to 100 and 1,300 newtons per square meter. So this is actually a rather small fraction of an atmosphere. What we have to do is divide this by 100 and 1,300 newtons per square meter to convert to pascals. So let's do that. So we have 7,500 divided by 101,300 equals, and so we get this is equal to two atmospheres plus 0 0.074 atmospheres, and so the increase in pressure would be 2.074 atmospheres. There we go. That would be the pressure at point two. A slight increase of atmospheric pressure uh, due to the slow down of the fluid in the wider section of the pipe. And that's how you work a problem like that.